Let's sing together, you are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up my feel fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I run dry, you fill my cup. You are my song together. This is called Jesus Messiah. See 
sing a couple of more songs. This first one is a favorite of mine. And maybe Trish even said it was a favorite of hers too. I think this is. Hey, when we all get to heaven, what a glorious day that'll be, right? It's 514. 514. Let's sing the first, second, and the last verses of when we all get to heaven.
This is uh, uh, sort of starting things off and ending it now uh, with the same theme, and that is that we have been redeemed. The first uh, song was that we all sing together was Since I Have Been Redeemed, and I hope that is the case with you, but this song is called Redeemed. this morning. 
Turn your Bibles to Psalm 37 this morning. You know, we've talked already a little bit about this past week, and you see the news, and you see a lot of anarchy and chaos and a lot of things going on, a lot of wicked people doing wicked things. That's just the way that it is. So how does a Christian respond? Well, you know, I'm calling back on my, as a child of the 80s, you know, uh, the title of a song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. <laughs> Don't Worry, Be Happy. You say, Sean, how on earth can I not worry and be happy in such troublesome times? I'm glad that you asked that question to me, me this morning. I got a psalm for you that's going to help you. David understood it. And he's going, he talks about the blessings to the righteous. That even though evildoers may be doing evil things, that there's blessings to the righteous, to God's people. We need to call upon those blessings, call them what they are, put them into our life, and allow that to help us as we're witnessing and seeing and hearing things that are very unusual, very strange, very troublesome, but yet within that all, we can see still in our life the blessings of Almighty God. Psalm 37, I'm going to read verses 1 through 11 this morning. Listen to what David says. He says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Right there, I could just stop. I'm going to keep going, but fret not thyself. Don't, you know, hold, hold on a second, he says. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Why? For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth the wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while. Let me say it again. Yet for a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, they shall diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Now, is that some verses for you this morning, or what? Amen. Right? That is awesome this morning. You're welcome, by the way. I didn't write it. I just repeated it. But David's giving you a blessing this morning. If you'll take those verses and read back over them each morning as we approach this week, you're going to be blessed. So I'm telling you, as David is saying, he didn't write the words to the song, but he said, don't worry, be happy. You see, I know that's hard to do because we see how unfair things can be sometimes. We feel that. It seems like those who sometimes prosper the most or get away with whatever or whatever it may be are the ones who seems like they hate God the most. We see that. So the question then is, and this has been asked not just in our time, but, it's, but in every single generation, through every century, and that is, why does God allow the wicked to prosper while the righteous have to suffer through life? Now, isn't that a good question? Kind of like the question, why do bad things happen to good people, right? There's no clear answer. You know, I wish that I could answer that question for you today. I wish I could stand up here and expound some type of great theological truth. That would just clear it all up for everybody this morning. But I don't have that type of knowledge this morning. But I'll tell you, I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel bad about it at all because I think I'm in good company. I found this. I think I'm in good company. Solomon, who was the wisest man to ever live, right? Kelly's never told me that, by the way. Uh, but Solomon, who is the wisest man to ever live, wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8, Verses 16 and 17. Listen to what the wisest man, trying to think about these things, what he says. He says, when I, applied, when I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done upon the earth, then I beheld all the work of God, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though a wise man think to know it, yet he shall not be able 
to find it. Y'all catch that? Even Solomon goes, I don't know. Solomon says, I don't have the answer to that question. Even Solomon can't figure it out. But what is Solomon saying though? He is saying that God is the one in charge upon the business that is done upon the earth. And it is not to, up to us to figure out why he does what he does. That's not our job. Our responsibility as God's people is to accept God for who he is and trust that he knows what he's doing. Right? There's where we come in. But how can we have any hope if the wicked always seem to prosper while the right righteous seem to suffer? Well, it's in verse 2. How can we have hope? He says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the earth. What is he saying? That there's a judgment day coming. That God's word is the final authority. If God says that one day the wicked's going to be cut down like the grass, rest assured, church, it's going to happen. That day is coming. The wicked will be cut down. God will deal with them in a way that we can't deal with them. God will deal with them in a way that we can't imagine. And when he deals with them, he'll deal with them in a way that is righteous and is holy. So we're going to let him handle those things. Does that make sense? Because what you want to do and what I want to do is come in there and try to take, make justice our own. That's not what we do. The Bible says several times in Leviticus and Deuteronomy and also repeated in Romans. It says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. Not saith Sean. Right? right? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. I take great comfort in that, y'all, this morning. That God sees it. He's not turning a blind eye to it. And these folks, these evildoers will be dealt with in his way and in his timing. So what we need to do then is draw out of the scripture that it's really just kind of a waste for us to wring our hands and worry and, and, and have all anxiety, get our stomachs tied up in knots. When we see the success of those, it seems like they continually speak against God. I want to tell you, this is nothing new. That there's been generation after generation and every generation a group that will speak against the things of God. You saw it in the days of Christ. We've seen it before Him and we've seen it after Him. And it'll be after me after I'm dead and gone. That you're going to have a group that's going to speak against Him. It's not up to us just to worry about it all. Get tied all up and concerned. That's all our focus is. is about what is happening and how the evildoers, it seems like they're just getting away with murder. And getting away with anything and nothing's being done. A day is coming when something will be done about it. So we can take great part in that. God will repay. God will repay for their evil deeds. So let's just start, stop fretting over it. It's what David says. Fret not. Go to somebody tomorrow when you're six feet apart from them. And say, hey, fret not. And see what kind of look you get. I want to see what they know what you're even talking about. Because we don't really talk that way, right? That's the King James language word. Fret not, sir, madam. Fret not, my preacher said, over the evildoers. Let's start, stop fretting over the wicked, right? And let's start looking forward for what the Lord has in store for those who are his children. That even in the midst of what looks like rampant chaos across the world, God still has blessings for his children. Not just in heaven, <coughs> excuse me, that day's coming, but right now in the midst of distress, in the midst of this time with all that's going on, because you, you're, trying to, you're trying to reach to try to find something positive to talk about. Well, I'm going to give you something positive to talk about because David tells us that God blesses the righteous. Even when the wickedness seems to be running rampant and it seems like they're having success, God still blesses his people. And we can still receive that in the here and the now, not just when we go on to glory. So let's stop fretting over the wicked and look forward to what God has in store for his people. What is that? Well, he gives us several here. And because we're not coming back tonight, I'm going to talk about all of them. How about that? Right? If you got to go, go. So just hang in. Y'all been telling me, don't look at your watch. So I'm about to test you today. All right? Because I'm going to try to encourage you. I'm going to talk about every one of these I just read. All right? You ready? Let's talk about his promises. Because he gives us a ton of promises in this psalm. <clears throat> but within it, though, there's something required of us before we can claim the promise. All right? So there's an action. In other words, there's an action on our part. And then there's the promise of God. Okay? So in other words, we can't just do what we want to do and then claim the promise of God. We have to obey him 
and do what he tells us to do, then we can claim the promise of God. And these are awesome. All right. So first, what does he tell us to do? He says, trust in the Lord. Trust him. Trust in the Lord. If you want to get through, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm covering my mouth. Y'all see that? I'm not coughing into my elbow because that just looks weird. And y'all are way away from me. <coughs> but it's just because I'm yelling. Y'all ready? All right. So don't worry about Brother Sean. Listen. We have an action to trust him. What does that mean? It means to put faith in him. To believe in him. Recognizing that God's there. He's with us. He's always going to be there. That he's going to be there as a place to hide. When we're in time of trouble, he's going to be there to lean upon when our bodies and our spirits feel a little weak. That happens, you know it. He will be there to stand upon like a rock when that ground underneath us begins to crumble. He is solid. He's firm. He'll never be moved. We have to trust in him. How do we do that? Well, the important step there is have faith. Just believe. Just believe in who he is. Believe in what he says. You know, you can't. It's awfully hard to trust in the Lord if you don't believe Him in the first, believe in Him in the first place. We have to have faith. We have to have faith in God that He is who He says He is, and then therefore we're going to have a relationship with Him, and we get that relationship through the gospel, which is quite simply that Jesus died, buried, and rose again. Right? That we can have forgiveness of our sins. And by accepting this and by repenting of that, I've got a personal relationship with the God of heaven and earth who created everything that we see. And when that happens, and when I put my full trust in him, he gives us the promise. And with the promise that I'm going to read to you comes from one of my most favorite verses. I don't wear my class rings, but I have one from college. And in it, I have this verse that I'm about to quote you inscribed in it. it's proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 and it says trust in the lord with all thine heart with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path there's what we got to lean upon church if we trust him if we take refuge in him, if we lean upon him, if we stand upon his promises, then he's going to give us the strength that we need to endure. He's going to give us the strength that we need to continue. He's going to give us what we need to go forward in a wicked world. Even though there is wickedness and we sit and we wish that it wasn't the case. But I'm telling you, every generation that's ever been had to deal with wicked people. And that is not changing in 2020, as is, you obviously can see. Right? Because I'm telling you, I'm calling it like it is. What I've seen is wickedness. And does not come from a heart of love. That's just the truth. Right? Yeah. But in the midst of the wickedness, if we'll trust him, he'll direct us. And it says in the psalm that I read to you that we'll be fed along the way. That's part of the promise. He's going to give us the sustenance that we need. He's going to give us the resources that we need, whether it be physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, whatever it may be. He's going to help us along the way if we do what? Trust in him. Now is not the time for the Christian to be doubting God. You with me? Mm -hmm. Now, it comes. sometimes we all do it occasionally because we start pondering that question that I asked earlier. How can God allow this to go through it? Why is he allowing this to happen? Isn't have y'all don't shake your head? Maybe ask yourself that question in some way, probably, because we get frustrated with it. It's like, Lord, just rain down judgment upon them, right? Well, be careful because before you were saved, you didn't want that to happen, did you? So be cautious, right? We have to we have to be cautious. I'm gonna get to it in a minute. We have to wait on him, and that's hard to do. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, right? But that's one of his promises. He'll direct us, he'll help us, he'll feed us, he'll guide us, he'll give us what we need, everything that we need, if we trust in him. Now's the time to trust in the Lord, now more than ever. Coming out of this COVID just nonsense, I mean, just, I mean, I'm not making a lot of it, it's a real thing, but I mean, this, I'm sick of it. I don't know about you, can you tell it? I'm just tired of it. Please, Lord, get this gone. You know, I'm ready for it to be removed. And then right on top of that, we see what's happening in our country. Right? Now's not the time for me to not trust in the Lord. Now's the time to me, for me to trust Him more than ever. More than ever trust Him. It's, what's, it's what, he, what I need to do. And if I do that, then I can claim His promise. He's going to guide me and feed me along the way. 
That he's got me. That I can lean upon him. I can stand upon his promise. He'll be with me if I trust in him. That's what we need to do. Now more than ever, you with me? Mm -hmm. All right, some of us are. Good. Listen, then we keep going. He says, delight yourself in the Lord. And I talk about this sometimes. And I, when I think about delighting the Lord, just revel in it. His blessings, this world that he created, all that God has given us, just soak it in like a sponge. Everything. We start thinking about that. I'm going to talk about it in just a second. But if we delight ourselves in him, he says, what's his promise? If that's our action, he says, if you'll delight yourself in me, I will do what? I'll give you the desires of your heart. Right? Now, I've heard some folks preach very foolishly on this subject. But I'm going to give you the truth. Because here's the question. Does that mean that God's going to give you anything that you want? If you delight yourself in Him? Remember I've told y'all a hundred times. A hundred times. This is going to be 101. Let me ask that question again. If you delight yourself in the Lord, is He going to give you what you want? Remember what I told you? God don't care very much about what you want. He cares desperately about what you need. You with me? He don't care much about what you want. He cares desperately about what you need. So here's the thing. I do believe that God will give you the desires of your heart. I do. I do. But I also believe that before he does, he's going to make sure that, uh, that he'll change what those desires are. In other words, think about it this way. When we begin to meditate and think about the things of God, you ever just stopped and it's hard to do in our busy, busy world. Just stop and meditate on the blessings of God that he's given you. Think back and really start to focus on how good he's been to you and how he has helped you along life's way and that prayers that he has answered and all that he has done. And then we get that into our minds and then we begin to stop and to contemplate the awesome sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on my behalf. When I really stop and think about what he did for me, and have we done this in a while? Maybe we haven't, and maybe we should. If I just stop and think about the sacrifice, it was no small task, church, that what Christ did for me, when I think, and then, and then when I get all of that in my head, and I begin to look at everything in my life through the backdrop of the cross, I start to see things through God's eyes. I begin to see things as He sees them. And that begins to change me. You with me? That begins to change me. And then by delighting in him and what I just thought about, and I think about his blessings, and I think about this, his goodness, and I think about his grace, and I think about his sacrifice, and then I get into the word, and then I get into my prayer time, I begin to see what's really important to him, not to me. But what's important to him. And in this way, then his desires begin to become my desires. And then he gives us desires of our hearts because they're now lined up with his desires. Are you with me? Does not mean that he's going to give you. Listen, does not mean he's going to give you that 2021 20, Ranger 23 foot bass boat with that Yamaha four stroke 250 engine on the back. That boat's only about $80,000, by the way. But, you know, but if that's your real desire of your heart, i got to tell you, it ain't really lining up with God's. Because, you know, we, but, but, but the Lord wants to bless me. Listen, Brother Sean, that boat's so nice, you don't understand. I think he really wants me to have it. I, it's so nice, I don't even have to even fish. The fish just jump in the boat when I go past them. I don't even have to fish or cast anything. They just jump right on in there. It's that nice, Brother Sean. And I think the Lord wants me to have it. No, he don't. He don't care if you have a boat. Two, three, one, it doesn't matter to him. That's not his desire for your life. He's got something much grander in store for us than material possessions. You with me? Yes, but if we'll delight ourselves in him. In other words, listen, roll in it. Revel in it. Soak it in. The blessings of God in your life. And think about how far he's carried you. And then you think about the things of Christ and his words and what he's done for you. Woo! I'm telling you, that's delighting yourself in him. You just sit there just soaking it in with a big smile on your face. And people are like, what is wrong with you? I'm delighting myself in the Lord. <laughs> Do that tomorrow too, by the way. See what kind of look you get. And then he's going to give you that desire. 
That desire could be for a lost family member. That desire could be for a husband or for a wife. That desire could be for healing for a loved one. Now we're getting serious now, right? Now it gets real. See that? Salvation of a soul, bass boat. Right? Yeah. He says, if you delight yourself in me, revel in me, soak it in what I've done for you. I'll give you that desire. Y'all see that? Oh, what encouragement this morning. Then he, keeps, then, it's, then he keeps on. I'm not looking at the clock. He keeps on. You don't either. He says, commit yourself to the Lord. Verses 5 and 6. Let me read them. I can't see. He says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. For he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. It's no accident that the words light and noonday are used here. The point's being made that one day... All of our righteousness and God's judgment upon us will be brought out in the open underneath the brightness of that noonday sun for all of us to see. You see, this is, this is what can help us today. If we commit ourselves to the Lord, just commit ourselves to Him. He's going to take care of everything else. You see, you got all the folks that are, that are running around in darkness. At some point, that's going to be brought to light. Now, whether that means it's going to be in my timing or, or, or someone else's timing... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that it's, it's, no, let me back up. It doesn't matter that it's not happening in my timing, the fact that it's going to happen. And it's going to be brought to light. What I can't stand today, when I watch television, or I see it, I really don't watch television much, but I see it on social media, and I see these riots, and I see this criminality and rampant wickedness, and I see folks clothed in black. And they're covered up, and their face is covered. Why are you covering your face up? You don't believe in your cause? Are you ashamed of yourself? Are you ashamed of what you're fighting for? Why don't you uncover that face and let's take a look. They don't want that. Because they, they don't want their deeds brought to light. And you know what that makes them? Cowards. Absolute cowards. Every last one of them who cover their face in black are gutless cowards. Tear off that mask and let's see who you are and let's see you fight for this cause you so much believe in. Because I'm going to tell you, ain't one of them come up to my face and tell me anything that they're shouting when it's just one-on-one. -on -one. They cover themselves in black and darkness, get that mob mentality, and they feel like they're invincible. Why don't you come down to my house and speak to me like that directly? You don't have the guts to do that because it's going to be brought out to light. It's going to be brought out into the open, and they don't want that. What he's telling us, if we'll just commit ourselves unto the Lord, just commit ourselves to him, that he's got this at some point, whether it be in this life or the one that's coming, these deeds will be brought to light. They'll be brought out of the darkness and into his light as the noonday, and they're going to shine forth. So we don't have to worry about that. I mean, I really, don't you, just, you know, you don't have to shake your head because I know the answer. You just want to rip off those hoods and that mask and like, just show yourself, tough person. They won't do it. Because they're ashamed of themselves, ultimately. They're not proud of what they're doing. Because they know what they're doing is wicked, but they're doing it anyway. Nothing new under the sun, but these deeds are going to be brought out to light. So I have hope in that. I have confidence in that. So, so allow that to kind of ease your blood pressure down a little bit. Because everybody seems to be rising when we sit because it makes you upset and mad and angry. Know that the Lord's going to bring all that out in the, into the open, whether it be here and now or whether it's going to be on judgment day, they will answer for their deeds. Then he continues on to help us. And he gives us several things on. And I'll try to move a little quicker as we continue in this psalm. But he tells us, and this is what I need. I don't know about y'all. He says, rest in the Lord. Oh, me. That's what I need. <laughs> I need a little bit of rest. You know, we went on vacation two weeks ago. That was probably the most restful vacation we've ever been on. Because we went to a lake. We didn't go to the beach. We went to a lake. And when we got there, I didn't leave there. I didn't have to get, I didn't have to, you know, put my makeup on and curl my hair. I didn't have to do any of that. Uh, you know, I did take a shower, but I didn't have to get ready is how we say it, right? And we didn't go shopping. Thank goodness. Praise the Lord. Didn't go shopping and uh, didn't go to a restaurant, right? Didn't do anything like that. Just rested. It was every. They said, well, what did you do that? Somebody worked. said, what did you do? It rained one day. I said, it sure did. It was glorious. 
It was glorious. What did you do that day? I did absolutely nothing all day long. And it was everything I hoped it to be. It was everything I hoped. I did, I didn't do, I mean, I did nothing. For however long, 16 hours, nothing. It was beautiful. Rest. David says, rest in the Lord. Rest in him. Well, let me tell you, this is accomplished if we trust him, if we delight, if we commit ourselves to him. Because once you've accomplished these things, then I believe resting in him is easy. If we trust, if we delight, if we commit. And when we trust in the Lord, we find that, you know, we find rest. Because God is our source of refuge in a troublesome time. In the time that we need uh, a little bit of rest, He's there. We can rest because we can lean upon Him. He's strong enough. When our bodies are weak, when our spirits are weak, we can lean upon Him. We can rest because He's there to stand upon. When the ground begins to crumble, when the sand begins to sink, we're upon the rock of ages that shall not be moved. We can rest if we know that. Do we know that this morning, church? He says also, and I'm continuing quickly now. He says, wait patiently for him. I struggle with this one, y'all. I struggle with this one. He says, wait patiently for him. We're told many times in the Bible to wait on him. Don't you wish it didn't say that? Don't you wish it said, as soon as I speak the word, here, here it is. It's not that way, is it? He says, to wait upon the Lord. In other words, it's not our business to try to hurry the Lord or try to force our will upon him. We have to be patient, trusting him that he's going to accomplish everything in his own time, according to his divine will, not my way, but his way. Amen. So patiently wait on him. And I'm struggling that right now with all the since beginning of March until now it's in June and how our world has just been turned kind of upside down quickly. And I know that I'm getting a little impatient. I'm reading the scripture. That's why I'm uh, excited to preach it to you this morning. Because I'm reading it. Because I need it. And I hope that. And I believe that you need it as well. David says, wait upon him. Be patient. Allow him to do his work in his timing and in his way. And if we'll do that, it will work its way out exactly on time and in the right manner. He says, fret not. I'm continuing on down the psalm if you're following me. He says, fret not because the wicked prosper. This is the second time that we're told not to fret over the ways of the wicked. God's going to take care of this. He's going to judge them in due time. Don't worry about it. Be happy. He says, don't worry about it when you see the wicked out there prospering. Don't fret not because of that. And he continues to help us. He says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Boy, doesn't the world need to hear that today? Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. We don't need to go around just waiting to explode when the first person that looks at us wrong. This is what we're seeing today. God's people need to be different. If we're resting in Him, then we can control our temper to some... We can control our temper. And I'm not saying not take care of yourself. I already told you. You protect yourself and your family. I know as a husband, as a father, I'm by... You know, God has ordained me. And I'm responsible for my family. And I take it very, very seriously. But that does not mean I go off and punch somebody in the face the first time they irritate me. That's not what I'm supposed to do. We're supposed to have a righteous indignation, as Jesus had. A righteous anger, not one that's just half-cocked and I just go off on the first, you know, the first whim. We've got some folks who can't control their temper. I had read this quote that said, that, uh, that someone had said, you don't lose your temper, you find it. Maybe that's true. You don't lose it, you find it. And as God's people, that is not what we are supposed to be about. We can control ourselves. We can take control over that, that emotion is rising up in it because Christ and the Holy Spirit are with us. We can do that. We can turn our back on anger. And this needs no explanation in this song, but it says, do not wish to do evil. I don't need to explain that anymore. We're not to partake in evil practices. We're to be the difference makers, to stand up and say, I, I agree that there was an injustice. I agree that there was something that was wrong. However, I will not participate in evil. I will not participate in evil. I will not do it. I'll stand against that and I will stand with the Lord. And then if we do all these things, if we obey, and that's our action plan, he says, but those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. That there's a blessing. Matthew 5, 5 says it this way, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. In other words, at some time determined by the Lord, there's going to be a new heaven. We talked about this when we still had Wednesday night Bible study. We were talking about heaven. That there's going to be a new heaven. 
And there's going to be a new earth. And those that have waited on the Lord patiently are going to be there. And we're going to enjoy the bounty of God's riches when we enter into that place. So in other words, then don't worry about what you see. Don't worry about what you hear. Don't let that distract you from what God has in store for you. Be happy because God is with you and God is for you and he will never forsake you and he will never, ever leave you. Amen. Kurt, come on up. Trish, you come on up. Let's sing a song. So what you need to do, what I'm going to do, is try to focus a little bit more upon the promises of the Lord. I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to be watchful. I'm going to be prepared. I am. To take care of my family. Sure. And you should too. It's not a problem. There's no, there's no problem with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? I like what the, uh, I like what the governor of Texas said. He said, uh, I kind of think about it in Alabama this way. He said, uh, well, we don't need the National Guard. Our folks can take care of themselves. So don't, don't worry about that. You know, it's like every man, woman, and child knows how to handle that in Texas. Well, hey, in Alabama, we do, we're just take care of yourself, right? But in the same breath, Lord, how can you use me? God, how can I be that voice of reason? How can I be that agent of change, God, in my community, in my family, in my workplace, wherever it may be? And God, would you use me in such a way? God, could you help me? He will, because now it's needed, I believe, more than ever. Amen? For us to do that. I know in some respects that we're insulated to a degree, <coughs> excuse me, living in rural Alabama, from what you see in urban cities. And to that I say amen and thank God. Right? I'm, that's why we live where we live. I'm very proud of where I'm from and where I live. Aren't you? I'm very proud of that. So I don't know if we'll have to concern ourselves with what these urban areas concern themselves with, I don't know. But what I do know is our prayers can touch heaven. Our prayers make the difference that because there's power in them, not because that we're the ones praying on, but because of who we're praying to. So let's make sure that we're doing our duty as Christians, as God's people, that we are asking him for help, that we're asking for change, and that we're calling upon the promises of God just as David did. That we know that there is evildoers and there's trouble sometimes, but yet I can see God active in my life. And he's still there. And let's take strength. I'm going to let, we're going to sing, I'm going to open up the altar for an invitation. I'm going to tell you this, if there's an opportunity here, I certainly want to give it. I don't know everyone's heart. I don't know what's going on. There could be someone listening to me right now on this video that's saying, I need that confidence that, that David had. I need that assurance that I can call upon the promises of God and know that they're true, then I can use them and that they can help me, they can bless me. I need that knowledge and I need it now. You can have that by simply calling upon the name of Jesus, asking him to forgive you of your sins, make him the Lord of your life. You can do that today. It's very, very simple. Go ahead and just tell him what he already knows. Tell him that you're a sinner and he needs saving. He'll do it today in the name of Jesus. He'll do it today in the midst of trouble sometimes. He will do it. Just like he said he would. And for the rest of us, let's draw strength from the word of God today. And let's make sure that we hold our heads up high. That we are proud about what God has done in our life. And that he will continue to bless us. Amen. Please stand to your feet, Brother Kirk. Let's sing hymn number 290.
this morning. Pray that you were encouraged by the word of God this morning, that God has blessed you and given you some strength. I know that he has for me. And, uh, you know, some of you may, uh, you've got decoration today here. I hope that you have a wonderful time with your family. I hope that you're blessed abundantly. And as I said before, that those that you're uh, remembering, that God would bring back wonderful memories. For those that have gone on before you, that you'd be blessed abundantly today. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy and whole. If you need me, you call me. If the church can help in any way, if there's an issue or a need that has arisen, please let us know. And we certainly want to help you with that. Uh, as far as our offering is concerned, the play to be out front, as usual, uh, here lately. Maybe that won't be the standard usual, usual here lately. But everybody have a wonderful day.